What's up guys, it is Austin Black. I am back for another YouTube video. I'm trying my hardest to blend into the background today. So I wanna do something a little bit different and make some videos just about my gear and my setups. Uh, you know, every video I make is somewhat based on gear, but I don't get into the super specific of exactly how I set up and configure all my gear. Uh, so I have about three videos planned. This one is about audio and audio only. So we're talking about my run and gun filmmaking audio kit. So here is the kit. Uh, the bag I use is this Timba zipper bag that I absolutely love. I love that it's clear. Uh, I love that it really stands out. It, it's not easy to lose track of. It's got this neon green outline. So you always know this is my audio bag. You can see it from across the room. Uh, and it fits most of the things that I use on a regular basis. So here's the bag uh, emptied out. Um, it's really lightweight. It's got these nice little places if you wanna kinda hang stuff in there. It's double-sided, so the way I do it is I put cables on one side and then the devices on the other side, basically. Um, but yeah, this case I would highly recommend. Uh, let's get into what is in the bag. Okay, so first thing we have is the Tascam DR10L. Uh, if you've been a wedding filmmaker at any point, you already know what this is. This is a wired lavalier mic. Um, it is just super easy to get recording and set up. So I will use this um, if I'm shooting a wedding. I will mic up the groom. I will mic up the officiant with these guys and they serve as sometimes a backup, sometimes as the primary audio source depending on the situation. Um, but these are super, super useful and reliable and I've been very happy with the quality of audio. I know a lot of people like the wireless setups like the new Rode Wireless Go and I really like those too and I'm kind of hoping to pick one up but for what I do in my filmmaking, this is what makes sense. I don't like dealing with wireless transmission issues and stuff like that so this thing, reliable, rock solid, easy to use. Uh, it takes one AAA battery so I would recommend uh, grabbing some Amazon Basics rechargeable batteries. Uh, you can get a bunch of them. I've got extra batteries with me whenever I take these things out, but I've never run out of battery. I've actually used these for multiple shoots without charging and I've never, uh, I've never seen the end of this battery. So these are really nice. They record on micro SD cards. Again, I've never seen the end of a micro SD card. Uh, the audio files are super small. So these are really simple. Uh, if you just want somebody moving around and talking and you don't have the ability to set up something, this is what you want to do for audio. I also uh, would recommend getting some of these little fuzz balls. Uh, it's just a windscreen. So I've shot many a wedding on a windy day and these things have come in handy. In fact, sometimes the DJ will put a lavalier on the officiant and I'll just be like, hey, you wanna put this on, on your mic too? Cause I've got a bunch of them and you know, it improves the audio quality. Basically you lose out on the low end of all the wind noise. And I think that's really useful when you're filming outdoors, which a lot of the time I am. A lot of the time I'm using these lavs outdoors. So it's really useful. So next we are going to go with what used to be my main audio recorder. And that is the Tascam DR40. Uh, so this thing uh, is a pretty common design. Uh, a lot of you may be familiar with the Zoom series of these things. I've always stuck with Tascam. It's just, I think it's a matter of personal preference at this point, but I really like what Tascam has to offer, uh, not just with this recorder, but with my main recorder that I'm using right now, the Tascam DR100 Mark III. Uh, but this thing is pretty simple. You've got two XLR inputs. Uh, you've got these stereo microphones, which can be really handy. Um, so this is my backup. So this is not my primary. Uh, what I will use this for a lot of the time is if I'm plugging into a sound system, I will use my main recorder to plug into the board. I will use this recorder to plug into the speaker as a backup because sometimes the board may not have the, the right thing routed and you may not have time to do a sound check. So having two backups is really important for audio and I've never really had an issue losing something when I've used two recorders like this. Another way I like to use the DR40 is uh, on top of a camera as a stereo mic. So for example, if you're recording a wedding ceremony, I know a lot of you might do weddings. Some of you might be tired of hearing about weddings. Uh, that's primarily what I'm shooting right now. But what I'll do, if there's something like applause, right? If you've got a lav 
and you've got a recorder plugged into the sound system, you're not gonna pick up the best version of the applause. So a lot of the time, uh, I will put this on top of the camera that's right in the middle of everything, and it'll pick up the stereo audio of everybody clapping and the environment as they're exiting. I think that just adds a little bit of an extra layer in the audio part of things, which is really, really nice. So two little accessories related to that is this uh, weird looking sock that just kind of like goes on top of it. Um, same thing, you're just getting rid of that low end, uh, you know, wind noise. Um, I don't use this all that much, but I like to have it in my bag just in case I need it. Uh, and then also this little ball head that just mounts to your camera's hot shoe, just so I can quickly put this on top of the camera if I need to. Now, I will say some of the drawbacks of this is uh, the battery life is, it's not great, uh, you know, you're going to be, if you're on a long shoot, a whole day long shoot, you might run out of battery. So it's always important to have extra batteries. Uh, you don't wanna run out. It takes three AA batteries. I'm using the same Amazon Basics rechargeables. Um, the other thing with this mic is, I don't know how good the preamps are, I'm not an audio guy, but it seems to me like the preamps on this thing maybe leave a little bit to desire, so um, that's kind of why I upgraded to the DR100 Mark III. Uh, better battery life, better preamps, let's take a look at it. So I'm actually recording on this thing right now, uh, but this thing is amazing. Uh, I, I got it on sale on B&H and it was a great purchase, a great upgrade for me. Uh, one of the big features with this thing is it has a dual battery system, so it has an internal rechargeable battery as well as two AA batteries. So I believe you're able to actually hot swap the AA batteries as well. So this thing is really useful if you're filming all day and you don't want to get worried about battery life. This thing, you will not see the end of the battery life if it's fully charged on a full day shoot. The other thing is uh, it has a lot of great features that you can access really quickly. So um, I really like this limiter feature, uh, basically kind of keeps it from peaking and looking too bad. Um, also this mic pad feature, if you're getting a really heavy line level that's just like blasting and peaking, uh, you might want to turn this mic pad feature on and it'll lower that level for you. Um, you can also adjust these two inputs separately. So uh, I can change my right input to a higher level to get a strong signal, change my left input to a lower level to get a weaker signal, just in case we've got those dynamics or we have multiple people giving toasts at different volumes, you might want to do different things. Now, both of these recorders have dual record built in so that's really nice. It records a copy of this that is minus 12 dB, uh, which is really valuable, again, because you've got these different dynamics if you have different speakers. Sometimes somebody may be quiet and then they talk really loud, so you, know, you wanna have the cleanest, strongest audio signal that you can for this kind of thing. Uh, this thing is just really easy to navigate and I absolutely love this thing. The interface is just a lot better. The screen uh, is backlit and I just think the screen is nicer. Um, just everything about this is just a better version of the DR40. The preamps are also better. Um, I've been really happy with it. So basically this is my primary audio device when it comes to plugging into a sound system, but it's also used for setups like this one where I have a boom mic right above me off camera. Let's get that in the frame. So I have a boom mic right up here, and that is the Deity S-Mic 2. Uh, so I really like this setup, and uh, this recorder is feeding phantom power to the microphone, and it is uh, recording it. So I'm gonna sync this up with the camera in post. So let's get into the cables that I have with me. I try and keep it pretty simple, not have a ton of distractions. So here are all the cables that I've ever had to use. So firstly, we've got a quarter inch to XLR. So the quarter inch uh, will plug into, you know, an aux or a headphone or, uh, you know, something on the mixer for the DJ or whatever sound system you're plugging into. The XLR will plug into your recorder. Um, I don't use this one all that much, but I have, I have used it a few times, so it comes in handy. I also have something, I've never had to use this, but it is a quarter inch to an eighth inch converter. Uh, I, I would hope you're not having to plug into this connection, but if you have to, the option is there just to you know pop that on the quarter inch and it'll work. Okay, so the second cable is probably the one I use most plugging into a sound system, and that is RCA 
to XLR. And um, this is the one where you can do the dual level on the DR100 Mark III. So you can have these inputs plugged in, have them recording at different levels. Um, it's really useful, it uses both XLR inputs, this is usually the uh, tape out on a mixer and that has been really good for me to use. And the last one I can't show you in this shot but it is a XLR to XLR um, and that's used to usually plug into a speaker or something like that or you know power the Deity S mic 2. Now the last thing, uh, I've never had to use this but um, this changes the gender of the XLR cable if for whatever reason there was some bizarre setup where it was backwards and I had the female in needing to plug into the recorder, I could just switch that out. Like I said, I've never used this but I have it just in case. So with this I feel like I have everything covered, I've never had an issue where I don't have the right cable and it's just three cables and two adapters so it's pretty simple. So the last thing is the uh, Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I usually keep this windscreen on it just in case. I want it to be useful for everything. Um, great microphone, great for on-camera audio, great for scratch audio. Uh, turns on automatically with the camera so you're not stuck recording no audio, which is basically the worst case scenario because even with the internal mics, you can usually at least synchronize it with other audio that you've captured, but if you're recording nothing, you just have to eyeball it, which sucks. So, highly recommend this. Uh, I usually have it with me. I usually have it on one of the cameras when I'm going on a shoot. So, super useful. Okay, and then finally, we have the uh, Deity S Mic 2 kit. I'm actually recording with it, so I will uh, give you a little bit of a view of that. So, right now, I have a couple setups that I do with this. Um, first, let's get into what's in the kit. Uh, so you get the uh, shock mount, which I'm using up here. So that just cuts out any like, you know, if I'm, I'm tapping on it right now, it should kind of cut out the vibrations that might make its way into the audio. Um, so it comes with that. It comes with this nice carrying case uh, with the screen. And then you've got uh, this, this thing you can mount it with, but I usually prefer to mount it with the shock mount. Basically what you need to know about the Deity S Mic 2 is that it's a clone of the Sennheiser 416, which is a legendary microphone used by professionals all over the place. Uh, I think that it does a great job, especially for the price. This thing is like, I don't know, 300 something dollars. So it's an amazing, amazing value for a microphone. This thing is also super rugged, super durable. Um, I've never had any issues with that. You're gonna need to uh, use phantom power to power it, which is pretty standard for these condenser microphones. It's highly directional, so I have it set up in setups like this where it's going straight to where the person's talking and it should capture mostly what's in front of it and nothing behind it. Um, so it's really useful if you're doing things like interviews, uh, if you're shooting weddings, it would be useful for note readings or if you're gonna you know, get some stuff of the couple talking. I think this is really useful. So I wanna show you a couple setups that I use for interviews. One that takes a little bit more time and a little bit more gear. One that's a little bit more run and gun on location type of thing. So the first one is uh, just setting it up with a C-stand with a uh, grip arm. This is really useful because it's basically like having a boom pole more or less. I don't currently have a boom pole, but I find that this setup is pretty versatile, so I don't need that extra piece of gear. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I will say the one drawback is that the C-stand is a little bit heavy. If you're taking it on location, you know, it's gonna be extra space in your car extra trip out of your car to set it up. So sometimes I prefer the more minimal setup. So here's that minimal setup. Uh, I just use one of these Manfrotto air cushioned light stands and I basically just attach the shock mount to that and I just boom it up or boom it down. This is usually what I'm using if I'm shooting a wedding because I don't have time to set up the C stand and all this crazy stuff. So that's it. So anyways, that was the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know your favorite audio gear. Let me know if you disagree with me. We can argue. We can argue in the comments. Uh, and look out, I've got two more videos coming, one about lighting and then one about all my filters and how I use my filters. So I'm really excited for those. Let me know which one you'd like to see first and I'll see you in the next one.